this video, I'm going to show you how to use Copilot Studio Builder to create Copilot agents for Microsoft 365 Copilot. So the first question you might be asking yourself is what is this Copilot agent that I just mentioned? A Copilot agent is an extension to the M365 Copilot or a Copilot product that Microsoft provides. And so you should think of it that this is basically just being able to add capability or scope down capability of the M365 Copilot down to a specific thing or any Copilot that Microsoft has that's extensible. So let's talk about extensibility for just a second. So if we want to think about extensibility in the Microsoft ecosystem of Copilots, there's really two different types of Copilot or agents that we're going to be able to build using Copilot Studio. So the first is going to be that we can build our own and that's going to be you're in full control. You can do whatever you want with that particular one. You can plug it into uh, Facebook Messenger or you can have it where you talk to it on the phone or you can make it where you can text to it or web chat or through Teams. You're in full control of that and you're in full control of that experience. But let's talk about the other place. Let's talk about extending first party Microsoft Copilot products. And again, the M365 Copilot is just one of many that can be extended using Copilot Studio. And when we look at all of those different ones, and this video is gonna focus on the M365 Copilot agent capability to extend it. This is gonna give you the same ability if you think about a smart speaker these first party copilots, they don't have the ability for you to go in and just choose whatever channel you want to talk to them through. You're going to be limited to the channels that they support. You're also going to find that they have different capabilities out of the box, just like a smart speaker would. So you're going to have it where, just like on a smart speaker, you're not going to make it not tell you about the weather. For the M365 Copilot that's targeted at personal productivity, you're not going to turn off the abilities for it to help you create a PowerPoint presentation or things of that nature. We're going to more so focus on what you could do with a smart speaker, such as make it control your thermostat at home. Well, in the M365 Copilot world, we might want to add some capability to it to allow it to do something like that that is not out of the box feature. And that is what a Copilot agent is. So you also heard me refer to the Copilot Studio Builder. And what I'm really referring to is the ability inside of the M365 Copilot to be able to do an inline extension or an inline agent build out of a capability. Now you'll also hear sometimes people refer to these as declarative co-pilots or something like that. Just be aware that this is going to be the lightweight version of your ability to be able to go in and build these co-pilot agents for your M365 co-pilot experience. And that's what this video is going to focus on today. Know that there will be future videos coming that will show you how to do this in, in an even more robust nature. But I want to first start with the simplest way of doing this, which is the Copilot Studio inline uh, builder experience. So let's start with taking a look at the IT help desk template that I've already built inside of SharePoint. And the reason I did this is I just wanted to give you an example of a very common scenario that we see people using uh, different extensibilities for. Let's imagine I want to scope down the M365 Copilot experience to answer IT help desk or IT policy questions and be more specific, control where it's actually going to get the answers to these type of things versus the default is that it's just going to search everything I have access to and answer questions. And so how could I actually build this type of an experience inside of the M365 Copilot to be able to control that a little more. So in this case, I've created myself an IT help desk SharePoint site, and you'll notice that I have a document library. And in this document library, I've just basically put in like an IT policy sample, an employee handbook piece, uh, 
document. And I've also got something on how to connect to the corporate network, all of those type of things. Just sample documents here, guys, nothing uh, specific. So let's go back over into the M365 Copilot and look at how we can use that inline builder to unlock the potential and allow us to be able to control the experience to go answer the questions in the correct way. All right, so now we're back over in the M360 Copilot interface as a user. And what we're gonna notice is that over on the right rail over here, we're going to see that we have things such as create an agent, get agents, and all of this. So one of the things that I wanna do is I want to actually say that I'm gonna create an agent. Now, once I say that I wanna create an agent, we are now in the Copilot Studio inline builder experience for the M365 Copilot. And you can see here that there's even some templates and things that, that you have. And you can click over to configure and be able to do some additional items and things like that. But let's just start with the description mechanism. And you can see here, there's a couple of different options if you wanna play with this. What I wanted to do today is actually show you how I would do this in the builder itself, uh, not necessarily just do it as a template. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to answer this first question. It's asking me to describe what I want the agent to do. So I'm just gonna drop in here that you're an agent that helps people with IT policy questions, help with guiding the user on key IT policy questions such as data security, use of personal computers, data classification equipment, purchasing and repair, and asset management. And I'm gonna send that on in and then what's gonna happen is it's going to go in and it's going to start building out the prompts that it needs on the back end. Now, it's gonna come in and say, how about IT policy guide? Are you good with um, that being the name for it? And you know, I think I'm just gonna say, uh, sure, that sounds great. And it's gonna go ahead and give it a name. And notice on the right hand side that we're seeing a experience starting to build out. Now it's asking me to give it some additional instructions and things that I might want it to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop in uh, a couple of different things. It's given me some suggestions of things that I might wanna try, but I'm gonna give it an example of what I might want it to say uh, here. Now, once it, gets through here, you're gonna see that it's gonna come back and say, now it's set up to help and things of that nature. Please try the agent on the right and things of that nature. But I'm gonna give it some additional things. I'm actually gonna come in and I'm gonna tell it, you know, never talk about uh, policies that are not related to IT and things like that. So let's just give it some additional instructions here. And it's now got the information it needs. Now we could go over here in the right rail and we can type something like, or we can even click one of these. Like I can say, you know, uh, asset management and, and click this. And it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go in and it's going to try to do what, and answer the question that I gave. And this is great, but I really want to control this a little bit more and the way that it's being handled. So one of the things that I want to do is I want to go in here to configure. And when I go into configure, I want to maybe change a few different things. Like I could change the icon here by just coming in and, uh, you know, let's just set a background or something like, uh, let's make it blue. Um, or, or better yet, maybe I should make it yellow. Um, and then, the, you can see here I can give it more information. You can see the prompts that were built and things like that. But here's where it starts to get interesting because now we can go in and limit the knowledge that we're going to allow this thing to have access to. So I'm actually going to just say browse. And when I say browse, it's going to go in and it's going to show me all the different libraries I have access to. And remember, we had that IT help desk one. So I'm going to click into this and notice that we can see all the different documents. Now, the interesting thing is that we could say all I want is just this one, or I can say I want them all. So the idea here is that we're giving it more instruction on what we can do. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of them and pass this on in. 
And you'll see here now that we have all of our knowledge correctly uh, selected. So with that, we now have all of the information from the SharePoint data that I want it limited down to. Now, the other thing is, is that if you want to use a code interpreter, what this is going to do is it's going to let you be able to go in and solve problems and uh, create visualizations and analyze data. So if you've got the data inside of this that you need to be able to ask questions around the data then and make it interpret something out of the data, then you're going to want to flip that switch. Now, the image generator is do we want to make it where this thing can actually generate an image as a response back? Now, in the case of this particular scenario, in neither case do I actually want that to be the scenario. Now, if we scroll back up to the top or we say new chat right here, what you're going to see is that you see these different options of things that are here that are just kind of guides, things that it can ask the user about that are just helping you with discoverability. Notice that those are called starter prompts and you can modify those starter prompts right here. You can add new ones, you can go through. Typically six is a good number on this and I would recommend that you just review this and you can see all of the different things just to make sure that it's doing what you want. Now, I'm gonna say I'm good with this one and I'm gonna go ahead and create it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit create and it'll go through the process of actually building it all up, doing all the configuration that's needed, publishing it, and doing everything that you need to prepare this thing for use inside of your M365 Copilot. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, that means it's going to make it available for everyone. And you're going to see that once it gets done creating, that it's not going to be available to everyone yet. This is so that the user can create their own because one of the beauties of this is that you can create your own for your own personal use. So you don't have to rely on IT to go build all of this. You can potentially build your own different scenarios and your own agents that would allow you to be able to be more and more productive. And then yes, we will be able to share those and publish those to a larger group of people but that's more of an admin function at this point. And I'm not going to cover that piece in this video. However, what you will see here is that we now have a link uh, for this. And you can click that link if you want to copy it. And then you can also just click go to agent. And you'll see now we have our IT policy guide. Now I'm going to show you guys a real trick, a real quick uh, trick to be able to get this into your teams if you want. The way to do that in a real quick fashion is just go in here and go into Teams. And once you are inside of Teams, what I would tell you you can do is in Teams, if you just go into like chat, you typically have one where it's just to you. You can come in here you can paste that URL that we, that we copied just a second ago. And when you click this, what's going to happen is it's going to say, oh, here's your IT policy guide. And you can see, you can say open with Copilot. And that is another way that you can get to that particular one. Now, once we are in Teams, you can see here that we now see the IT policy guide showing up on the other side. So this is just another example of ways that you can communicate uh, and such inside of Teams. Now, let's go back to the M365 interface. Okay, so now we're back in to the IT policy guide in the M365 Copilot. And notice that over here on the right, we have it selected. Now, if I come up to the, uh, the Copilot up here at the top, you'll see that it goes away. Um, and we're focused in on Copilot. So let's first start with if I'm on the right rail and I just click this, what can I do? Well, I can actually click on one of these and send it in. And you'll see that what it's going to do is it's going to go and it's going to answer this question with the information that was provided uh, before. And you'll even see that it gave us the employee handbook and the IT policy as the thing that we use to be able to generate the response. Now, this is great, but we could also 
do things a little differently. And notice I can come in and do a new chat and have a new chat. You'll see over here that you, you're getting your recent chats. All of that type of stuff works. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to show you guys how I can call this thing out from the M365 Copilot. So if I'm over here on this side, one of the things that a lot of people don't know that you can do is if you hit the at symbol, you can select that you want it to be chatting with the IT policy guide. And when I do that, I can come in and I can say something like this to it. Like I can just ask a question such as this. Like, can I use my own laptop at work? And by doing this, I'm letting the M365 Copilot know that I need to ask this to the IT policy guide and it's all inside of that one interface. Now, the other thing that's kind of nice, and I'm just gonna switch over to the IT policy guide, is because of the fact that I can also come in and ask questions to it such as this. I can come in and ask it a question about what are the different types of data that you could have. And so it's gonna use my data classification information from my IT policy. And because of the fact that this is a generative AI type of experience that we are having, we can of course be able to ask this thing follow-up questions about that data classification. And you'll see here that it's gonna come back and it's gonna say, this is the answer to that question. You can actually send that data to that vendor because it is public. Now, again, this is just a great example of how people are using extensibility inside of the M365 Copilot and Copilot agents to pull this type of stuff off while limiting the scope down to that specific uh, capability. So I hope you found this video super helpful. And if you ever want to get any additional Copilot Studio content, you can always like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, you can go try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.